Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on using the CRAAP test for resource evaluation. When searching our databases, you can usually rest assured that you're accessing trustworthy journals, newspapers, or magazines. But when you search the web, you have to be more critical. It helps to ask yourself some questions about the source. One popular method for evaluating online resources is the CRAAP test. CRAAP stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. Currency refers to when the source was published. So what is an acceptable date of publication? The answer varies widely. It depends upon the discipline and the topic. Acceptable publication dates for resources on a topic like Shakespeare's play Hamlet will be different from scientific research on climate change. Relevance is easy to determine from resources you find in our databases because they will include an abstract most times that will summarize the article so you can easily determine relevance. However, when you find a resource online, you might need to skim the source to determine whether the article is relevant to your research. Ask yourself, does the information in the source directly apply to your research and help support your thesis or research question? Authority is one of the most important criteria to consider in your evaluation process. If there was only one standard you used to evaluate a resource, this would be it in my opinion. And I should know, because I'm a cat. When you find a resource from the library databases, you don't have to be too concerned about authority since most of the resources appearing in the databases are published by professionals with a formal editorial review process. Editors act as gatekeepers who make sure that the information they're publishing has been properly researched and that experts have been consulted or that the authors themselves have expertise. But anyone can publish any information online and there is a lot of false misleading or unreliable information that you'll find online. So when you do online research, you have to make sure that you either know the authority of the writer or the publisher of the information you're using. And if not, you'll need to do some research on the online resource you're using. We'll talk more about this in class. The second day stands for accuracy. Again, if you're finding resources from our databases, the published information has gone through the process of being reviewed by editors, whether they're newspaper editors or editors of a scholarly journal. And all of these professionally produced resources will include cited research. But with some online sources, this might not be the case. If you're using Google to find information, be sure that the source is citing quality research from other professional resources. If there are links to other resources, click the links and check them out. Ask yourself, is the author citing questionable sources? Are they using dead links? Are they citing no other secondary or primary resources? If that's the case, then this is likely not a resource you want to use for your research. Finally, we come to the letter P, which stands for purpose. No, wait, that, that's a porpoise. I said purpose. Purpose can be a useful criterion to consider no matter where you find the source. Even the resources from our databases serve different purposes. For instance, in scholarly journals, you'll find book reviews in addition to scholarly research articles. These serve very different purposes. A book review is quite brief and only intended to help the reader decide if they want to read the book that's being reviewed. Although a book review can appear in a scholarly journal, in most cases, it will not be very useful as a secondary source for your research. A scholarly research article, on the other hand, is useful as a secondary source because it contains substantial research or analysis of a topic. Likewise, online you will find websites that have different purposes. They may contain information, but their central purpose might be to sell you a product or to entertain you. Oftentimes, a website that intends to sell you a product can be set up to look as if it's trying to inform you. And other times, 
The website might contain truthful information, but it just might not be the best source for that information. Let's look back at that article on catnip from the Purina website. I pointed out it being problematic that it has no listed author, but it is also on a commercial website that wants to sell you products and probably isn't the best source of reliable information on catnip. Even if the information on this page is factually correct, I know that I could find a more reliable source of information on catnip from a known expert on a news website, a magazine, or from a scholarly article on the topic. When you're searching online, you might also come across conspiracy websites that are not from legitimate news organizations, but are formatted to look like real news. This website, Natural News, at a quick glance looks like a news site. It has the word news in the title, but it's actually a conspiracy site that is not real news from real journalists. As previously mentioned, other websites and publications are meant to entertain readers. Some very legitimate publications like People Magazine and Us Weekly are intended to entertain rather than to provide in-depth information on a topic. This doesn't mean that the information in these publications is false, but those publications might not be the best source of information that you could find. In class, we'll talk more about the CRAAP test and resource evaluation to help you determine if a resource is a good one for you to use for a research project. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions about resource evaluation, please reach out to one of the librarians at High Library.